Hey, good morning. So it's the start of another day and I'm just leaving my room. My room 120 here at the Hollywood Roosevelt. I'm gonna take you on a little tour of the hotel while it's still early and maybe there won't be too many people around. So you can see what it looks like. So come along. So this is just the hallway leading. This area here is where the cabana rooms are. The room I'm in is one of the cabana rooms and uh, as opposed to being in the tall, what they call the tower. So most of these rooms are situated around the perimeter of the pool. And some of them may even have direct access to the pool. You could just walk out your room and go to the pool. Mine does not. Mine has a lovely little patio area that is uh, fenced in. So you cannot access the pool, but you're really close to it. As you can see, here is the door. You can walk out and make your way to the pool over there. But I'm just gonna keep going because I wanna go to the entrance and show you that. Yeah, I actually had booked a regular room here and when I came here to check in, they said, oh, me, I've upgraded you to a cabana room. So I was not going to complain. The cabana rooms are beautiful and luxurious and a bit more expensive than the regular rooms in the tower. So you get the gist of the hallway here. <laughs> Some nice artwork on the walls. In a minute, I'll show you the lobby. I just had to pause here for a second for this photo of Sinatra and recording booth in the old days. I'm sure he spent many a time here at the Hollywood Roosevelt as well. So now I've come out into the outdoor area. This is a little lounging area and just to the left of that is where you can get over to the pool. I'm in the cabana room and the pool area is right over there, but we're gonna keep walking. This is the walkway to the front. It's, it's kind of funny because the front of the hotel faces Hollywood Boulevard. So you would think that would be where the front desk is, but it's not. It's actually in the back of the hotel, kind of where the parking lot and the valets are. Just around the corner. There are a few stairs to walk down here. It looks pretty quiet here this morning. So there is the front desk, the check in area. Some morning coffee. I might have to get some concierge area to help you when you need something while you're in Hollywood. Nice little lounging area. Coffee service, I might have to come back for some of that. So that door over there is the door that takes you out to the parking lot and actually you could see the, the valet booth over there. You just give them your ticket and you go get your car. And then of course when you walk in, you have the stairs to go up to the next level. I think this is considered ground level and that's the main lobby and this lovely little reflecting pool. We're gonna come over here to the elevators. We have the Roosevelt Theaters over here. They've had a couple of events in there while I've been here. So it can be rented for special events. And here's the corridor that leads down this way. We have our elevator on the left. We have the Roosevelt Theater on the right. Very cool old Hollywood-like posters. Looks like we can't really get in there. There was a really happening, hopping event here the other night, lots of music. So that would be that. But we're gonna go over to the elevators, which is gonna take us up one level to the main lobby. And it's beautiful. Here's a couple posters showing some of the restaurants in the hotel. The spare room is pretty cool. Has a bowling alley <laughs> and a lounge, lounge area. So, okay, up to the next floor. Here we go. So you can see we're on G right now. We're gonna go up to L. Even the elevators are kind of pretty cool. Sorry, no reflection. Okay, so we're getting off the elevator. This is the area here where you get off the elevators, and now we are in the main lobby. Look at this lovely old letterbox. Wow. It's a lot for letters. Beautiful stairs going up to the next level. 
that would be the front, well, that's the front of the hotel. That's Hollywood Boulevard out there. But this is the main lobby. At night, this place is pretty, <laughs> pretty happening. <laughs> lots of people, um, lots of drinks flowing, conversation, good times, right here in this beautiful lobby of the Hollywood Resort. baby grand piano or maybe a grin. I think it's a baby grin. I'm not sure. Beautiful fountain. Look at these ceilings. Check these ceilings out. There is so much history at this hotel. I don't even know it all myself, but um, probably one of the most famous guests is Marilyn Monroe, who lived here for two years, actually, in one of the cabana rooms while she was on her way to becoming Marilyn. She had not really been discovered yet. So the Hollywood Roosevelt was her home. That is the lobby. And over here, I'm hoping I can maybe get access sometime before I leave, is the Blossom Room. This is where the very first Academy Awards ceremony was ever held. Right inside there. The Blossom Room at the Hollywood Resort. So, I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed and try to get in there for a few photos. Thank you for asking so nicely. This lovely man over here has agreed to let me in okay. so we can see the place where the very first Academy Awards ceremony was ever held here at the Hollywood Roosevelt. Oh my goodness. Come on in. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is it. The very first Academy Award. Do you know where the um, stage was for the first Oscar? No, that I don't. But I believe, I believe it was on this side, and all the crowd was right here, but in round tables. Round table over there, you said, or over there? All, so the stage was right here. Okay, the stage was over there. And then the table right here. But the only thing is, I'm trying to figure out whether this wall is the original wall or the wall you walked through the first time. Oh, okay. They could have made some modifications. I see. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know. Wow. But then again, you know, people were smaller than than us. It's a smaller event then than it is now. Okay, he's gonna turn on the lights for us. Fifteen minutes long. But really, fifteen minutes long, and <laughs> now it's five hours, and it's not even everything. Yeah, tickets were like five bucks. Five dollars for a ticket to the Academy Awards. Wow. Well, I'm gonna try to span this out and hope it doesn't get too dark, but yeah, this is the whole room. So many famous people. Do you know who won those first awards? Um, the first one was a movie called Wings. <gasps> oh, wow. <laughs> it can change colors. Oh my goodness. They had a dance floor light. Dance floor light. Oh wow. Strobe lights. Oh wow. That is beautiful. The ceiling is exquisite. And do you know what, um, exactly what year this hotel was built? The hotel was built in 1927. 1927? First Academy Awards was 1929. First Academy Awards, 1929. You do? May 15th. May 15th. You just had a birthday then. Mm -hmm. So did the hotel. Well, it's exquisite. Um, yeah, I'm so thrilled to be here. So it's a little dark, but um, the wonderful man that is helping me told me I needed to come up here and take a photo of myself in this mirror. Uh, did not tell me why and then once I took the photo he explained to me that this mirror <clears throat> This is Marilyn Monroe's mirror. This was the mirror that was in her room while she lived in the Hollywood Roosevelt So this is the mirror she would have been looking at herself in So I literally am now looking at myself in the same mirror that Marilyn would have been looking at herself in during those years <laughs> This is crazy 
Or what? Wow. I am looking at my reflection in the same mirror she looked at her reflection right here. Wowie wow. This is so great. <laughs> The one final comment I wanted to add is the gentleman told me that um, these are the original floors from when the hotel was built. So they've not been changed, they've not been removed. These are the actual original floors still from all those years ago, which I think is pretty awesome. The nice man that was helping me, he just told me where to find Marilyn's room. Probably won't, you know, can't get in it. But I could see it from the outside. I think I might be on to something. <laughs> yeah, thinking I'm on to something. I think this is the staircase that leads to Marilyn Monroe's room. I mean, that might be a little clue <laughs> up there. So we're gonna go up the stairs, see what we see. Well, that didn't take long at all, so there's the stairs that we just came up. Come up the stairs, make a right turn, and voila. Marilyn Monroe Suite, 229. It looks like a pretty big suite. It takes up this whole section here. That's a door leading outside, so it would be uh, a second level above the pool, overlooking the pool. And that would have been her room. Those would have been the doors that she walked through <laughs> countless, countless times. Right there, at the Hollywood Roosevelt. History. So I just walked out those double doors at the end of Maryland Suite, and now you can see the view of the Tropicana Pool from up here. I'm certain Maryland probably stepped out here and uh, took a look at that pool from this, this vantage point at some point. <laughs> it's incredible. It's incredible being here. Not just for Maryland, but just it's a beautiful hotel with tons of history. It's just spectacular. Highly recommend staying here. You are treated like, well, Hollywood royalty. <laughs> Literally. No complaints whatsoever. Superb service. Private access over there to the balcony overlooking the pool. And her suite. It sounds like there's somebody in there right now. Somebody's staying in there. All right, back down the stairs and on with the day. Here we go. So I came back out here to the pool. I thought of something else I'd like to show you guys. There are some photos of Marilyn. Pretty popular photos, famous photos of her posing on a diving board. Now that diving board is no longer here, but what's really um, identifiable about it is you see her on the diving board. You see this area here, that balcony with those wooden panels up there. You see that in the background of the shot. So if, I, if there was a diving board here, I would pretty much be standing where she was doing all those poses on the diving board. And that was the background view. Pretty crazy. So don't have my tripod. <laughs> what? I'll try this. So the diving board is long gone, but it's right here where all those famous poses of Marilyn Monroe on the diving board, standing on the diving board, laying on the diving board, kind of like this, <laughs> or dang it right behind me. So, no diving board, but I could still kind of, I don't know, <laughs> do the Maryland thing here at the Hollywood Roosevelt. And there's that balcony in the back that you see in all those photos, so. <laughs> right here. 
Baker. Norma Jean Baker before she was Marilyn. This is as close as I can get without the actual dining room. Board. This is historic. Cool. At the historic Hollywood as well. <sighs> Alright guys, that's about it. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Right, so today I'm doing a little strolling down Hollywood Boulevard, taking a look at some more of the stars in the pavement and just taking a look at some of the incredible surroundings. It's a little drizzly, hair is gonna frizz, but it's Hollywood, it's all good, anything goes. Anyway, I wanna turn the camera around and show you a couple things I think are kinda cool if you're into movies. Um, <laughs> so, I don't recall the year. Maybe I'll look it up and, and put it here, but uh, there was a classic, the, considered one of the best bad movies in the world, Plan 9 from Outer Space. And then years later, they made another movie kind of documenting the story of Ed Wood, the man that created Plan 9 from Outer Space, and uh, Glenn and Glenda. It just kind of shows how he met Bella Lugosi and his whole backstory and the making of Plan 9. So. Um, yeah, there's a couple spots right around me where uh, scenes from Ed Wood were filmed, which I think are kind of cool, so I want to show you. So just a little bit further down the block here from me, there's a very, very swanky old Hollywood bar called Bordner's. Uh, from what I understand, a lot of Hollywood celebrities used to frequent that establishment. So there is a scene in Ed Wood where they are reading the reviews after the debut of Ed Wood's movie. Uh, and that takes place inside Warner's. And then we also see some scenes where Johnny Depp is walking actually towards me. Um, Ed Wood and Bella Lugosi are having a conversation walking down this sidewalk. Um, there's a lady there I try not to get in, the, in my camera because um, I don't think she would want to be seen. Um, but anyway, that's Warner's and this is where that scene happens where, you know, they're just walking down the sidewalk. another shot of Bordner's um, but uh, that that building right there the red gate and the building right next to it right there with the awning um, Edward is walking down the street and he stops right in front of there that's where he discovers um, Lugosi for the first time inside that shop um, so if I walked a little further down you would see the same angle I'm just trying to stay away from the lady I don't, over there. I don't want to invade her privacy. I'm not sure what is going on. It's Hollywood. Um, so anyway, you do see that uh, that area in that scene. So I'm just going to leave that right there for now. <laughs> and there's another scene that is filmed where um, Ed Wood and Bella are waiting for a bus. Uh, that's actually just a little bit further uh, away from, a few steps away from me, but we kind of see this, um, this in the background. That is the classic um, Musso and Frank Grill. Tons of Hollywood deals have been done there. Uh, lots of celebrities used to hang out there. Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio used to have their dates there. Sinatra. Tons of, I mean, it can go on and on. So we do see that in the film as well. It's pretty cool. So there's also an establishing shot where you just kind of see uh, the old-fashioned cars pulling up to Musso and Frank, and you do see it from this angle. So I'll see if I can get myself into that shot. So you can see Musso and Frank has been on a lot of movies that have been filmed there. Uh, classic Hollywood establishment. Um, so it made sense. Actually, in the movie, that is where Edward met Orson Welles. Uh, right inside there. So um, lots. I could spend a whole night in there taking pictures of booths where pe famous people have sat or famous scenes from movies were filmed. Maybe one day I'll get the keys. <laughs>
Christine Autry, William Peterson, Randy Newman, <laughs> Buck Owens, John, John Barrymore, Bob, Bob Lowe, Bob Lowe, wow, right there. A good one. Oh my gosh, this is a huge one right here. Aaron's Kelly. There's so many television shows that he is responsible for. It gave us a lot of joy. Frank Lloyd. Andy Williams. Get close. Dick Kelly. Jerry. Duffy. Alicia Alphanese. Ted Knight. <laughs> He was awesome. Who could forget him on the Mary Tyler Moore show? So good. All right, let's keep moving here. Tommy Dorsey, big band leader, largely uh, responsible, I think, in some parts, anyway, for Frank Sinatra's success. Then Scully. Just a George Papard. Betty Furnace, Robert, oh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, but he was great. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Guy Lombardo, yeah, I don't want to butcher, I don't like butchering people's names. The Monkees, <laughs> hey, hey, we're the Monkees. <laughs> That's great. Mary Carlisle. Walter Coning, Arthur Kennedy. Oh, George Takai. Chris O'Donnell. Gene Lockhart. Uh-oh. I might have walked too far. I might have to turn around. Um, Gene Rodenberry. <laughs> Harry James, another big band musician of the day. Myrna Loy. So good. John Payne. Ruth Warwick. And Faye Emerson. All right, I'm going to stop right here for now. So there's actually a reason I was stopping there. I wanted to take a turn down this street. Very famous scene, very famous movie that happened down here. So hoping I can get close and show you. I don't know, this street, some of these streets, some of these streets, I'll do my best. Okay, at the start of the block, I wasn't so sure I wanted to walk down here, but it actually got a lot better with each step. So right ahead of me, you might recognize this location. I believe it has a different name now than it did in the movie. But let me get closer. See if you can guess what I'm standing by, what I'm standing in front of. You need a hint? So what happens after he rescues her? She rescues him right back. Yep, right there is the fire escape that Richard Gere climbed up to Julia Roberts to profess his undying love at the climax of Pretty Woman. Right here. It's crazy. Look at that. It is now the Las Palmas Hotel, 1738 Las Palmas. So yeah, right freaking there, man. Oh, I'm geeking out a little. I'm totally geeking out right now. That's the fire escape he climbed up. That's also the fire escape she climbed out of every night when she was leaving to go to um, <clears throat> work, if you know what I mean. So yeah, <laughs> this is it, pretty woman. Now I believe, let's see. The limousine, when he's coming to get her, comes from this way. So some of this that you see here uh, in this shot, you will see in the film as well. Maybe I can get the street just a little. Yep, that's about it. That's where he's coming in his limo with his head sticking out the sunroof. He's got a big bouquet of flowers. He's going to get his girl Vivian and make her his <laughs> right here on Las Palmas Boulevard. 
unfreaking believable. It's like it really hasn't even changed that much. Photo here. Private property, unauthorized, no trespassing. That is fine. I don't plan on trespassing. I try very, very hard not to. I try to be as respectful as possible when doing this. That's it, Pretty Woman Hotel. Oh! The best. I just can't believe I'm here. Bye, Vivian's balcony. Yeah, so when you are doing this filming location thing, obviously it's fun to see where a lot of movies were made and kind of get that peek behind the curtain and see what it looks like in real life. But when it's a movie that you either really, really, really enjoyed or that really imprinted your life, it's just a whole different experience. And this is just a classic. Um, <laughs> some great lines that I still use to this day. Uh, she rescues him right back. That's, that's great. I love it because relationships are a two-way street, right? So the pretty woman boat. The Pretty Woman Balcony, Richard Gere, Julia Roberts, right there. Well, I don't think I'm going to show you every star because from what I understand, the Hollywood uh, Walk of Fame extends for about two miles up and down Hollywood Boulevard and then a little bit up Vine. There we have a Church of Scientology, pretty popular in Hollywood. I can imagine some pretty big celebrities go to that one. But uh, it's just fun. It's a really cool place to come. Yes, it's Hollywood Boulevard. You're gonna see some strange things. You are going to see, sadly, a lot of homeless. Oh, Harry Belafonte. Um, you know, you're gonna see the signs of the struggling times. Hollywood Boulevard is not what it used to be in the 40s and 50s. So, um, but it definitely is a hopping, happening place, very much alive at night, as you saw. Uh, and just a pretty cool place to walk around and just take in the signs, the signs of yesteryear. And pretty much anything you want to buy, you're going to be able to find here. I mean, there are gift shops and souvenir shops every... <laughs> you, you can throw a stone without, you know, without hitting one. You can't throw a stone without hitting one. Alright, I'm going to keep walking here. I see anything that is of particular interest. Oh, here we go, Doris Day. Who doesn't love Doris Day? I have a souvenir shop. This one looks kind of nice. I might take a pop in. We shall see. Well, this is a pretty big one. Some of you might like to see Walt Disney. What would our world be like without Walt Disney, right? We really need him right now. And, sadly, the lady we lost not very long ago. One of our favorite... Uh, and last remaining golden girls, Betty White. Aw, so sweet. Rest in peace, Betty. Couple more big ones over here. This one's at Hollywood and Mick, Mick, Mick Haddon. We have um, Bing Crosby. And we have Charlie Chaplin. That's pretty cool, Charles Chaplin. Oh, I could just look at these all day. It brings back so many memories. Oh, yes, here. Oh, this one is a little bit special to me, I gotta admit. Um, when Freddie Prince first came on the scene, I was, uh, I was quite young, but I was a huge fan of Chico and the Man. Um, I was probably too young to be watching that show. <laughs> I don't know, but um, I loved it, and I loved him, and what happened to him is a, a tragedy. Another one of those Hollywood tragedies of fame coming too fast and people not being able to handle it, but um, I don't know. He definitely made an impression on my life, that's all I can say. We're still on that, we're still on that same stretch and we have quite a few uh, famous ones here. We have Roseanne, we have Amy Poehler, two funny ladies right next to each other, followed by a very funny man, everybody's favorite uh, elf, <laughs> Will Ferrell. And, uh, you like me. You really, really like me. Sally Fields. Four powerhouses right there. And up here I see John Goodman. Star of so many things. Roseanne, uh, Blues Brothers 2000, uh, the movie The Fame, and uh, on and on and on. 
here. We have Bing Frog. Bing. You know, you don't hear a lot of men named Bing anymore. Chandler Bing, but that was his last name. Milton Burl. BB King, yes. The Master of Blues. BB King, right here. Hollywood Walk of Fame. Vivian Leigh. Lee Leigh. Um, I'll worry about that tomorrow. I think that was her famous line from um, Gone with the Wind. And all I did was turn around and there's Mr. Charles, the one and only Ray Charles. Oh, I love his music. So good. So, so good. Quite a life story he has. Well, ever since I met up with people who know a lot about Los Angeles, I've, <laughs> I've heard about Bob's Big Boy. <laughs> Something I never really knew about, but apparently it's a pretty big deal. And so I thought it was my turn to come and see the man, Bob himself. Hope the line is not too long. It is lunchtime. Yeah, this restaurant was built in 1949 by local Scott McDonald and Ward Albert. And it's the oldest remaining Bob's Family restaurant in America. Designed by respected architect Wayne McAllister. And you can read the rest there. But it's pretty cool. And then right here, of course, we have Bob himself. The big boy. In the flesh, so to speak. <laughs> In the plastic. Bob's big boy. Yeah, the big sign. Bob's big boy. He has a big boy. If you eat burgers like that every day, you might get to be a big boy yourself. Lunchtime rush here at Boss Big Boy. What you see is quite a few people in line ahead of me. Every table is full. Better shots. So since it is the crazy lunch rush and I didn't want to wait for a table, I decided to just sit here at the counter since I'm by myself. No big deal. <laughs> this is it. This is the famous original Bob Big Boy in Burbank. Pretty wild. Here's the menu. I think I am going to have the original. Anything that's the original is usually pretty good, so I think I'm going to go with that. Before I dig in, I just wanted to mention it's actually for a town where everything is expensive. This is not bad. It's only $12.99 for the burger with fries and a salad, and then of course the beverage is separate. So. Here we have it, the classic big boy number one and a runaway french fry. Pretty good. I am going to enjoy digging into this. I'm going to spare you the sight of me doing that because it looks like it's going to be messy. Well, maybe I won't spare you <laughs> the sight of me biting into it. I cut a little manageable bite-sized piece out of it, so I'll take about another it. three hours. So. I can't wait to try it. I've heard so many good things, I just cannot wait to try it. So here we go. That's very tasty. I really like it. Bob, you're doing a good job out here. No wonder this place is packed. Really, really good. I think I spilled all over myself, so. I actually realized it tasted a little familiar. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a Big Mac at McDonald's, because it's got two patties, and it's got, I don't know, the cheese and the lettuce. There's just something about it that reminds me a little bit of a Big, a big Mac, but, but better. <laughs> so, anyway, I just thought I would add that in. There's another 
section of merchandise here, just outside the restrooms. So, no shortage of merchandise at Bob's Big Boy. Now back out into the rain. It never rains in Southern California, right? Wrong. <laughs> okay, Bob. It was nice meeting you. I gotta get moving along. See you next time. All right, so after my Bob's Big Boy burger, uh, which Bob's is in Burbank, I went to another location out here in Burbank. Huge, huge, huge film. <laughs> kind of tripping to be here. So, I don't know. If you could see behind me, that might give you a little clue. If you can guess it, give yourself a pat on the back. But I'll turn the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Won't keep you in suspense any longer. <laughs> okay, so, okay, that's exciting, Mary. It's a, it's a car repair place, <laughs> but it's actually a lot more. This is where Clark Griswold and his son purchased the family truckster right here. Um, in the photos, they're standing here. The truckster is being shown to them. Um, <laughs> this is it. This is where the vacation journey begins in National Lampoon's vacation. I did ask if it was okay to, to take a couple photos here and they were great. So this is where they are when they're picking it up and then the camera pans around and there's another shot that you see of uh, Clark and his son standing here and in the background you kind of see this building on the right here and uh, some of this, these structures over here. So that's another um, angle that we see during that scene. And finally, later on, um, after all the hijinks are done, we see Clark and the pretty um, smashed up car. We see this scene, we see this angle, we see this part of the building uh, in that final, <laughs> the final time we see them at this location. But again, it's all right here at this one facility here in Burbank, California. This is where it all happened. This is where the truckster was purchased for their, before they went on that uh, memorable truck in the vacation zone. Now, like, that's pretty cool, right? <laughs> I think you'll agree. Pretty freaking cool. Chevy Chase, vacation. And what's interesting is, one of the streets you turn on to get here is called Chevy Chase Drive. I don't know if that's a coincidence or if that was some kind of nod, but I thought that was pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> Having a good time at Burbank. Hope you're enjoying watching. So this is the facility, it's right through those doors. Now it's changed a little bit. So you do see the um, hospital doors over there to the left. And it's through those doors that Lily Tomlin comes out with the deceased on a gurney. And she brings him out and she comes this way to her vehicle, puts the um, body in the trunk of her car. And then she kind of comes out and parks in backwards here while the other ladies come running out and go you know <laughs> have you lost your mind and then they run off with the corpse so it was right here at this little medical facility on uh, Chevy Chase Drive in uh, Burbank not too far from where the Griswolds got their family truckster <laughs> I love that movie it was a fun little movie and it was a catchy song even if I another dead to me filming location is this one in the fourth episode of season three titled between you and me Jen and Judy stop at Cindy's restaurant on their way to the LA National Forest. In real life, Cindy's restaurant is a really cool retro diner that looks exactly like it did in the series. Dead to me. I gotta tell you, location hunting, you can work up an appetite. I know it's only been a little while since I had that burger at Bob's Big Boy. I'm thinking, I don't know, I'm kind of getting hungry again. Thinking about maybe popping into this Burger King. <laughs> Do you know where I am? <gasps> Do you have an idea where I am? I'll show you. Okay, so it looks just like your 
average ordinary Burger King out here in uh, Burbank, California. But this one is not your or average ordinary Burger King. This is the Burger King that at the beginning of Back to the Future, we saw Marty McFly flying by on the skateboard um, down the drive through or adjacent to the drive through lane and out on his way off to start his day. Now, granted, it's a different Burger King. The original building is, you know, is, is gone and it's been rebuilt. A lot of times these franchises find it more economical to knock down an old building and rebuild it rather than, you know, update it or refresh it. So it is a new Burger King, but if you line it up with the scene in the movie, this uh, antenna or power or utility pole or whatever, um, it, it's you can't mistake it. It's in that scene. It's very prominent and also some of the other power poles on the other side of the, the street there. Unfortunately, you cannot see. There's some other um, buildings back there with signage that you see in the scene and you know back there for example uh, that's kind of all obscured by these um trees but this is it this is the burger king marty goes speeding by on his little skateboard as he goes on to uh start his uh his day and get the movie and the story of marty mcfly underway so it's out here on uh Victory Boulevard in Burbank. Beautiful Burbank. Downtown Burbank, as Johnny Carson used to say back in the day. Yeah. This is it. So, no. I don't really need another burger. I think that big boy is going to keep me full for the rest of the day. But just had to come here to take a look at this. Okay, so the next location on our little journey today is this beautiful home uh, that is out here in the Sherman Oaks area of Los Angeles. If you don't recognize it, maybe you have not watched the show called Dead to Me, starring Christina Applegate. But if you do watch it, then you will recognize this as, well, the home of um, Christina Applegate's character, Jen. So we see it a lot. We see it in daylight. We see it at night. Um, we see it in all different scenes throughout the show. But this is the home in real life. It <laughs> looks like they have some security signs up, I've noticed. So they are probably getting visitors like myself. So trying to uh, keep my distance here. But it's a beautiful, beautiful home. Perfect. I could just see this. I could just see Jen living here. It just seems like it's perfect. And I think the location scouts have a fun job and an amazing job, and they just do such a good job um, of picking the right homes for the right characters and everything. It's 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 it's, it's an amazing part of the um, television or filmmaking process to me. How they always seem to get just the right thing. So that's it. Jen's house from Dead to Me. On to the next. I just got a couple more stops to make and wrap this day up. I'll have some dinner with some friends. Uh, just making a quick stop by this house. If you ever saw the movie Halloween 3, which is a little bit different. There was no Michael Myers in Halloween 3. It had to do with a diabolical plot to <laughs> put masks on children uh, and people on Halloween that would allow mass destruction. And, um, Maybe it wasn't a hit at the time, but it's grown a cult following. Anyway, on the night of Halloween, when it's time for their plot to, you know, go into action and everybody's running home to get their masks on and, and watch the show that's being advertised, um, you see children in different cities very, very briefly um, racing home because they want to wear their masks and watch this big show. So this is the home that you see very, very briefly. It had a white fence at the time and it's labeled Dayton, Ohio. <laughs> of course, it's actually here in Los Angeles, but uh, this is where you see the little boy running home. Uh, and like I said, there was a white fence. It looks kind of like that, actually, the, the shot. You don't see much of the driveway. You do see those two posts on the left and uh, the, that shrubbery hedge in the back there. So uh, this is it. This is Dayton, Ohio in Halloween 3. There you have it.
Well, I was supposed to hit one more spot before heading back to the hotel. And I tried, but unfortunately, sometimes when you're out doing location hunting, things don't work out. So that was one of them, but that's okay because I've hit a ton of fun spots. I'm just gonna head back to my hotel, get freshened up, maybe relax a little bit and uh, get ready for dinner with friends on my last night. Stay in the right three lanes. <laughs> okay, uh, dinner for friends my last night in Hollywood. So still more to come on this beautiful little overcast day in Los Angeles. So I went to the restaurant to wait for my friends for dinner and I was advised by one of my friends here that um, right across the street from the restaurant where we're having dinner tonight, eh, it's over there, you can't see it, behind the tree, uh, is the one, well, the first guitar center that ever opened in the United States. The very first guitar center, right? here very first and what's really cool is just like the hollywood walk of fame has stars for the uh, people in the entertainment industry and just like Grauman's chinese theater has handprints of people in the entertainment industry this place has handprints of musicians very similar to Grauman's, but it's dedicated solely to musicians and there's some really cool things here so i thought i would pull the camera out and show you now everybody's got a different idea of um, different taste in music. Peter Frampton was someone I really liked when I was younger. And oh my gosh, the Doobie Brothers. The Doobie Brothers. <laughs> I love them. Michael, is Michael McDonald here? I would think so. Where's Michael McDonald? There he is. There he is. I gotta say, I'm not really heavy metal, so some of these people, Motorhead, I, that, I don't know really much about them. Um, but I certainly know, you know, Sheila E. Who doesn't know her? Leonard Skinner. It's got the handprints of everyone. This is so awesome. The Shantae's. Van Halen. Holy moly. Handprints of Van Halen right here at the first original guitar center on Sunset Boulevard. There's so many people. Vince Gill, Larry Carlton, Zach. Uh, don't know how to say that. <laughs> um, just taking a look at some of these. Smashing Pumpkins. Cheap trick. Uh, is that, is that? <gasps> yes. Queen. The people from Queen. Wow. In memory of Freddie Mercury. Oh. Now that man can sing. Such a tragedy. Have some people up here on the wall. I, I would think it's when their uh, handprints were put here. That that would make sense. So. Jane's addiction. Don't really know that. Kansas, definitely no Kansas, Rush, <laughs> this is insane, Goo Goo Dolls, it's just one amazing musician after another, or band after another, uh, let's see, who else, Blondie, Blondie, excuse my shadow, it's Grace Slick, <laughs> I guess she didn't want to do her handprint, so she did her eye. The Isley Brothers, Eric Clampton, holy cow, Chris Christopherson, <gasps> Aww. Bob Seger with his autograph, Moody Blues, Joe Cocker, Kenny Loggins, I love Kenny Loggins, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. Uh, all kinds of, you know, these guys I've heard of, Run DMC, Brain Mixer, GX2, just all kinds. This video would be 20 minutes if I showed you every single one. Kobe Hancock, Alanis Morissette, 
on this day, November 13th, 1985, this rock wall is hereby dedicated to those individuals who have made significant um, contributions to the music business. <laughs> Hall and Oates, Nancy Wilson. This is just incredible. Yeah. Dick Clark, Dick Clark. Wow, Carlos Santana. Wow. Buddy Guy. This is just incredible. Anyway, you get the idea. If you're ever out in Los Angeles, you might want to come to the Guitar Center on Sunset Boulevard here and check this out. This is really incredible. Here's uh, a few more. Miles Davis, Muddy Waters. Otis Redding, oh, greats, all the greats. There's probably a few more on this side. There are a few more over here. Waylon Jennings, John Bonham, and of course Stevie Ray Vaughan, living in Texas, I know who he is. Jimi Hendrix, Keith Moon, oh my gosh, this is just incredible. Def Leppard. <sighs> anyway. And if that's not enough, there are also signed guitars. Guitars signed by the people that played them. Uh, I don't know if you can see that with the glare of Slash, Jimmy Page. We have some more. John Lennon, <laughs> Roy Orbison, Richie Valens, Elvis Presley. It just goes on and on and on. More guitars. Nita Strauss, Ron Wood, Michael Anthony, Carlos Santana, John Lee Hooker, Melissa Etheridge. Wow. So if you ever get out to LA and this is your jam, definitely come to the Guitar Center on Sunset Boulevard and check this out. It's pretty incredible. I'm pretty sure they do actually sell guitars in there too. <laughs> okay, it's margarita time. I just think of top, uh, Bill Murray and Scrooge. <laughs> My margarita just arrived, y'all. Whoa. Flaming margarita. Am I, how do I drink that? Blow it out. First. Yeah, blow it out. <laughs> blow it out? Like make a wish for my birthday? Yeah. Ooh, that is something. I've never seen that before. Me neither. Okay. It's my last night at the Hollywood Roosevelt. Have it home tomorrow. Still have a few more things to do tomorrow, but this is my last night here. My dinner companions bought me some roses. <laughs> it was really sweet. It's been a wonderful trip, but uh, time to turn in for the night, and we'll see what tomorrow has in store. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's journey. See you soon.